thinking along the same lines as David Fleming is the writer and philosopher Sir Roger Scruton. What is important for me about David Fleming is the wide range of his mind and the way in which he brings in the, the cultural, religious and literary and even musical um, inheritance of our civilization in order to cast light on what exactly we are. And I think that is terrific. A civilization that's simply devoted to material growth and to the maximizing of consumption is doomed. Human beings don't only pursue and enlarge their appetites, but also constrain their appetites and constrain their sense of what is uh, appropriate through being attached to things, attached to each other and being attached to a place and the economy and the form of life that goes with it. Uh, and that's something which I, I share with David Fleming, of course, his whole, um, whole emphasis of his ecological thinking is that, that place comes first and, and that we human beings are unhappy until we've made a place for ourselves. We, make it, we don't make it alone, we make it with others and we make it through bonds of attachment which are not merely economic. Uh, 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 on the contrary, they are cultural. The place that, that uh, we have made here, which we call Scrutopia, we have tried to uh, rescue this old farm and reintegrate it into the local economy. Home is the place where you are in the existential sense. You know, this is where your identity is, where you fix your being. Because your home is connected with your identity, you feel an immediate bond of responsibility towards it. If you make a mess in your home, you clear it up. You, you repair it when it starts leaking and falling apart. You, you're concerned about all its surroundings. We need to learn how to extend that natural feeling, which I call oikophilia, the love of home, um, beyond the immediate environment of the person to the wider environment. But of course, the wider the environment becomes, the weaker the motive to, to, is to protect it. So it follows from this way of looking at things that we must also localize our, our politics and our, our sense of environmental fragility. And that's something, again, which David Fleming was uh, so keen to insist upon. The political economies of the future will be essentially local. They will use locally generated energy and local land and materials producing for local consumption. This local lean economy will be shaped by a rich, earthy mixture of reciprocities and culture. Localization stands at best at the limits of practical possibility, but it has the decisive argument in its favor that there will be no alternative. If we think of, of the problem of our dependence upon the global food distribution network, and this is something which has come about without anybody intending it. It's come about, as Smith would say, by an invisible hand from the opportunities available to supermarkets and from, from, from the hidden subsidies that are offered to supermarkets by governments, you know, free roads, a planning permission that permits them to develop these enormous warehouses. Supermarkets are a kind of uh, scam, really. I mean, they're, uh, they're a fully subsidized form of food distribution, uh, which externalizes many of its costs onto future generations without any recompense. And, uh, you know, they are the enemy. But everybody loves them because they can go to a supermarket and get everything you want. It's, you, you go back to your hunter-gatherer state of mind, picking things off the shelf, you come away with a smile on your face. So it's a big problem, you know, about motivation. But at, at a certain point, of course, um, this distribution network will collapse. Uh, uh, um, but we'd have the alternative, and we've, we've always had the alternative. People grow their own foods spontaneously. Farmers grow food spontaneously. That's what they do. Uh, and um, if, it, 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 if the food is priced rightly, then the farming industry is perfectly sustainable. Uh, uh, we here will buy sausages from our neighbor 
because not just because those are jolly good sausages, but because this is our neighbour and we really like our neighbour. And it's great to be able to enter into this kind of relation with him. But of course, those sausages are a lot more expensive than the ones that I could, we could get from the supermarket down the road. But it's those old fashioned bonds of attachment which have been threatened by the global economy. And this is where we have to, where we have to start thinking, you know, OK, how do we bring back that local food economy? Organic agriculture and permaculture are both intended as imitations of nature. Organic cultivation is the only way by which a community can provide its own food. It doesn't import fertility by the bag. It protects its soil. It's self-reliant. These are some of the foundation principles taught here at Schumacher College, deep in the English countryside. David Fleming lectured here, and one of his successors today is the anthropologist and activist for local agriculture, Helena Nornberg Hodge. In our entire history, we grew up connected to the sources of our food, connected in a way that meant that we also understood that food production was and must be at the center of every economy. And the, the celebrations around the harvest, around the feast of coming together to enjoy the, the fruits of those labors. For the harvest of gardens and allotments, for earthy roots, for crackling cabbage, for hanging beans and striped courgette, we give thanks. For the harvest of local hedgerows, for the struggling bramble, the black showers of elderberry, the mushrooms nesting in the dewy grass. For the friends made and support given, for people with whom to laugh and with whom to weep, we give thanks. Blessings on the meal. So the idea is to make food as local as possible. So you can't get something more local than this because basically all of that is from the field. Chickens have laid these eggs over there. Uh, these beetroots, carrots, um, cucumber, all of that is from what we produced. So we wanted to celebrate um, harvesting, bounty, and um, enjoy and eat in the field what was produced in the field. I think it's very much about improving environmental sustainability and locality of food. And obviously we can grow our food in a very ecological way and try and work as much with nature as possible, uh, rather than relying on larger industrial scale agriculture to feed us. And so I think part of the programme is trying to train up the growers of the future to kind of spread smaller scale local growing to other places. This kind of lean economy, as David Fleming described it, has also been called the economics of happiness. For, for us, the economics of happiness is an invitation to exactly the lean economy, to the local economy that David talks about. And it's the perfect phrase for us because it makes it very clear that at the deepest level, this is about our own well-being. And I believe that today, as people are feeling overwhelmed and depressed, uh, it's incredibly em empowering to be able to share a message like David's, that there is a path that we can embark on right now that can, even with the madness surrounding us, start to heal ourselves, our souls, start to help us to connect with life in a way that leads to, uh, that is energizing, inspiring, and hopeful.